Good afternoon, Josh Johnson here on a beautiful Friday. Some clouds overhead, but it's a little warmer than it's been for a big chunk of the work week. We will, of course, sign ourselves up for that. Of course, a lot of the attention is looking at next week, which, let me say right out of the gate here, we still do not know what is going to happen next week. There are still a huge range of potential outcomes on the table, everything from warm and rainy uh, to something more wintry. Uh, We'll dive into all the details and possibilities that we see in the data, but what I don't want is for you to think that we are predicting snow at the end of next week or predicting ice at the end of next week. We are not. Right now we are predicting uh, an unsettled pattern with some periods of rain and turning colder, but there are some possibilities on the table. So we'll dive into it here. We began this afternoon with a look at the Alabama sky. Always a nice place to start. We had gravity waves this morning. If you saw uh, in the sky, it looked like lines, linear clouds. Those are gravity waves. Remember, the atmosphere is a fluid. It behaves like a fluid. And uh, sometimes if you, if you force air to rise into a stable air mass, it starts to do this wave thing. And on the crest of the waves, you're getting rising air condensation that forces out moisture and you get a cloud. And then as the wave goes back down, you get sinking air, which causes the water uh, to, ev to, to evaporate back out, and you get no clouds. And then the wave continues, and on the crest of these waves, there are little clouds. So that's why you get those lines going through uh, the atmosphere as we did this morning. A uh, friendly reminder, you can get these live streams of our cameras at WSFA anytime that you want. So check that out. Temperatures around the state now, 50s as of this recording, 55 in Montgomery. 61 at Dothan. Still cold in North Alabama. Huntsville shivering away at 45, 48 over in Tupelo, Mississippi. So not a whole lot happening there. So this is the latest run of the GFS. That's the American Long Range Computer Model. And uh, we'll walk through this together. So for us locally, scattered showers around tonight and through parts of Saturday. It is not an all-day rain. This is Saturday morning. You'll notice Alabama is right here, in case you're wondering. Um, so on and off, mainly light rain there. Then it gets interesting. The rain probably mixes with or turns over to a little snow in the higher elevations of northeast Alabama, north Georgia, and up into the uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Tennessee. Uh, this would be Saturday evening into Saturday night. Some accumulating snow is possible in the higher elevations. Uh, for the major metros, Atlanta, Charlotte, uh, back to Birmingham, I don't think you see any accumulation. The, the, the wild card there could be Charlotte in that mix. For Atlanta and Birmingham, it doesn't look like a big deal. Rain clears out Saturday night. Sunday is a colder sort of day, but it's dry. Here is Monday. Notice Monday morning. So you've got an area of low pressure forming back over the Texas Panhandle. 1032 high anchored over Washington, D.C. Not much happening. Monday is a fairly calm day. Uh, then Tuesday, kind of more of the same here. You start to see some moisture return and a few scattered showers around Tuesday. That's not a severe weather setup or all day kind of rain. Then this Arctic front stalls. Now the million dollar question is going to be where does it stall? This morning's data has moved it back north some. But I would caution you, don't get wound up on what this data is suggesting six, seven days in advance. Um, we look for long term continuous trends. This could be a blip in the data. This could be a trend. We just don't know. We need to go through the day today, the day tomorrow, and probably Sunday too before we know if this is the trend or not. But if this were to be the case, the Arctic front goes north. You get a fairly substantial return of moisture. It rains at times Wednesday. Thursday is a soaking cold rain with a major ice storm from northeast Texas, Arkansas, back into parts of Tennessee and northwestern Mississippi, maybe even northwest Alabama. But if this verifies in central and south Alabama, we have rain and only rain, followed by a sharp change to colder weather by Friday, Saturday. So this is in some ways a timing situation. Um, if this wave forms along the Arctic front a couple of days early, mainly Thursday, the cold air is not in position and all you get is rain. So that's the, that's the GFS scenario. I'll take you through the European computer model scenario. And frankly, it's not a lot different. So scattered rain Saturday, that rain mixes with or changes over to some snow, particularly in the higher elevations of North Georgia, the Carolinas, and eastern Tennessee. Uh, no accumulation for Atlanta, Birmingham. We'll watch Asheville, Charlotte, Knoxville. They may get some, the ground could turn white in some of those spots. Monday is a dry day. Uh, then Tuesday, rain returns. Scattered showers, it's on and off. Then into Wednesday we walk. Here's Wednesday morning. Scattered rain, not a big deal. Arctic front forms. Arctic front 
dives to uh, to the north of us, stalls out around I-40, and that surface low forms on Thursday. Now remember, earlier this was looking like something that might happen Friday, Saturday. So the European buys into this faster timing too. But is that one run or is this a, a, a trend? We don't know yet. Um, if this, again, were to verify, you would get rain around Thursday and early Friday, then a shot of colder air out at the end of next weekend. But frankly, this is, again, in this kind of pattern, you're getting out beyond the usable range of computer models. Uh, these computer models are not going to be able, be able to resolve these small-scale details like this more than four or five days in advance. So I would just caution you don't get too wound up on uh, I told you this when it when it showed when it showed snow and ice for us. I said you don't need to get too wound up about this. This could change. Now the operational runs of these models have backed off of that a little bit this morning. Uh, that could be a flash in the pan that could trend back. We don't know, so don't get too wound up on that either. It's too early to make any kind of definitive statements about what's going to happen next week. One thing we rely on when the operational models do this, when they are flip flopping around, we call that a windshield wiper forecast. By the way. It just goes back and forth. Uh, we rely a lot on computer model ensembles. Now, this is the ensemble of the GFS. And for uh, new viewers, an ensemble, that just means we take the computer model and we tweak one small variable and we run it. And then we take a different small variable and tweak that instead and then rerun the model. And this process gets repeated. Each time, a small scale variable in the model is tweaked a bit. Um, the GFS here has 30 of these tweaks, these versions of its own model. The European has 50. Um, by averaging them all together, you can sort of get a little clearer picture sometimes. So this is the GFS ensemble for this morning. You'll note uh, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Call it 10. The bottom one's nothing but zeros there. So roughly 9 or 10 of these that show some form of snow or uh, snow accumulation out towards the end of next week. Um, that's a that's a decent signal. It's still only 33% of them. So odds still are not in your favor if you're looking for snow or ice here, but I will say this sort of signal in the long range data is much higher than what you would see in a typical February weather pattern where you're expecting sunny and 50 degrees. Um, this, is a, this is a signal that has to be watched. Couple of caveats here. First, this doesn't account for ice accumulation. This is just snow. So there are probably some of these ensemble members in here that are suggesting ice accumulation uh, instead of snow accumulation. Some of them are probably suggesting afternoon highs in the 70s with rain. So there's a very wide spread in the ensemble data, but there is a signal in the data that suggests, OK, this would be something we need to keep an eye on out at the end of next week and into next weekend. So. That's the update. Uh, I appreciate you hanging out and watching and listening to all of it. Um, we obviously can't get into detail like this on TV, so I thought it would be useful to do a detailed discussion. Um, you can watch this discussion and others like it on my YouTube channel. Just search Josh Johnson on YouTube. I'll probably post it on Facebook as well. Um, also, of course, watch our forecast tonight, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, I'll be on, then Lee Southbrook will be on tonight at 9 and 10. Either way, you can get a, uh, get a strong, good update there on WSFA 12 News. So moral of the story, there are still lots of possible outcomes here, everything from 70s and rain to ice and snow for the end of next week and next weekend. And no one knows yet which of these possibilities is going to happen. So you need to keep checking back for updates. We will get no, more data over the weekend and next week. And really, I think Monday, Tuesday is when we'll start to get a clearer picture. And by Wednesday of next week, that's when we'll be able to, I think, definitively tell you, here is what we think is going to happen Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So it's not a cop-out. I'm just acknowledging the limitations of our science and of our own knowledge. So uh, consider it a, uh, an acknowledgment of our own humility. So there you go. All right. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a wonderful Friday and a great afternoon. Uh, I will be off after the 6 tonight, so I will see you again at um, Monday, on Monday. So have a great weekend. Take care.